Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It is your girl, Miss Honey, here for another Power Book 2, Season 4, Episode 3 analysis, you guys. I am exhausted. <laughs> I've been driving all night long to get my little cousin back from college and um i am worn thin you guys i i had i just don't have it i wish i had it but i don't have it to give you full miss honey but we are here to um to review this week's episode you guys it was another good episode for me i know that some people um are saying it's so slow that it's boring but I know too when it's just full of capers and these fantastical stunts um, for me sometimes I just think we need a little bit more context and what we've gotten in episode 2 and in episode 3 is a lot of context and I appreciate the context right like how are we going to wrap this season up, this series up, just on capers? It's just not going to, it's not going to work, right? It's not going to be as effective. So we do need context. We do need dialogue. We do need words. We do need storylines. So um, that's my take on that. If you guys are new to the Miss Honey channel, welcome. Those of you who have been here uh, before, welcome back. I am Miss Honey. We don't do reviews anymore. We do analysis. All right. In this um, episode three, Birthright, we get to see where Tyreek and Brayden sell their cars. The cars that he commandeered back from 2-Bit. And Brayton's Mercedes, they must have sold it for a good clutch, right? Um, and it was all thanks to Pinky. Pinky knows a car broker who takes cars overseas, so on and so forth. And they pay a good, pretty good price for it. Pinky is the business. Um, I really do hope we see Pinky in some in in, in whatever wherever 50 Cent is taking the franchise. I hope we keep pinky because i enjoy pinky and i wish we could see more from pinky so yeah pinky hooked all that up um brayden is concerned he's concerned that you know he's doing all of these things to get them back help to help get them back in the game he wants to make sure he's being kept in the loop and Tariq is only half listening to brayden and we see him do it a lot in this episode he's only half listening and basically, he's like, yada, yada, yada. I got to go meet somebody. I want you to be in charge of taking the money out of the suitcase and putting it in the duffel bag. <laughs> That's what you can work on. Work on getting that right, Brayden. <laughs> Hilarious. Tariq essentially is going to meet Monet and Pinky because... Monet and Pinky, um, he's using Pinky to act like he's helping Monet find out who who shot her, right? And and um, Pinky was like, yeah, um, Kay Egan's house is empty. It's been empty for a long time. She was like, you, Monet was like, you called me down here to tell me that? It was really just something to... to to give her, just give her something. Let her know you 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 look like you're working on something, that type of thing. Meanwhile, after Monet stomps off, Pinky gets a payment for the cars, and he's also going to get another lump sum, I guess, for helping them, you know, pull the wool over Monet's eyes a little bit longer. I don't know. We see where Effie is going hard in the paint, keeping the wool over Kane's eyes. You know, and I'm just like, to what end, Effie? To, you can't be doing all of this for Tariq. You're not sleeping with this dude 
and acting like you like him for Tariq. I just, I don't understand. I don't understand why it ain't every man for themselves. Like, why are you still this invested, Effie? Why? So, um, we see where Drew and Diana go over, um, their dumb plans, their, their dumb ours plans together, right? Drew's gonna confront Noma about making her, him her number two, right? Um... I, where did you, I mean, why would she make you, I, <sighs> Diana's plans is to finish out whatever she got to get done for Noma, and then she wants to be out of the game. And Drew tells her she ain't going to be able to get out of the game like that. The game don't work like that. It does not. Drew is right about that. We see where, um, again, Diana wants to get out. Drew wants to get in deeper. We see where Davis is having a hard time keeping his clients um, and his booty buddy slash substitute lawyer is, is not helping at all. Like, she doesn't really seem like a true lawyer per se. She seems more like an intern. So that's bizarre. Um, but yeah, he's losing his clients and um, and and his wife is after him. His wife is after him for everything she can get. You know, he's suspended. He's not disbarred, but his license is suspended. So we see Davis in this episode make some decisions because he is, his his back is against the wall. Okay, he's between a rock and a hard place. And um, Tariq comes over and needs a connect. Basically, we got this money. We got a little money. We need somebody that we can get product from. And then we can flip that product and then make more money. And it can't be Noma. It can't be the Russians. It can't be anybody but, you know, somebody, somebody somewhere that nobody knows anything about. Right? So we're going to get in bed with a different um, cartel. I mean, I mean, what, what do you have to do to be a cartel? And the only reason I ask that is because we see where Carter is going kind of hard in terms of Noma and in terms of Tariq and that type of thing. But we've not seen Carter or his people roll up on the Tejadas. Right? I thought we were trying to get drug dealing scum off the street, but we no one's rolled up on the Tejadas yet. I don't even think they've mentioned the Tejadas name. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Put it down below. But I just I'm just trying to figure out does this mean that the Tejadas aren't a big deal? Does this mean that um you know they're small potatoes? You know, is he coming to the Tejadas at some point? But, I mean, clearly the Tejadas are working for Noma. You know, you you can just see that just standing around the street in front of Noma's place. It's odd. It's odd. So, yeah, Tariq needs to connect. Davis knows... Um, a couple of guys from his bag of thugs, magic bag of thugs, and but he wants twenty percent, and and Tyreek is like twenty percent. He's like, yeah, I want twenty percent. This is the only way I'm gonna be able to keep my business afloat and get my wife off my back. I need, um, I can't practice, he says, but I can hustle. The hustle don't stop, right? So we see where Noma texts Monet to tell her that her services are no longer needed at the job. Like right now, basically the kids try to con convince um, Monet that Noma just wants her to get well, to get better, to get, you know, all healed up before she comes back down to work. And I'm like, it's, what are you, answering phones? Like, it's, it's a, what do you mean back down at work? It's a, it's a drug 
cartel. You you go pick up the drugs and you go sell the drugs. It's not like you in charge of warehouse inventory or something. Like it was just a whole weird little confused conversation. The whole while we get to see Janet, um, Monet's cousin, like super duper ear hustling. Like super duper ear hustling. And I just thought that was peculiar how they had her positioned in the scene. Um, we see where Drew and Kane both get a text from Noma. Um, Drew's text says, Am Obi's A Wall? Um, go and investigate. We see where Kane's text says, Obi's A Wall, come over here and work his desk. Basically, I need you to take his place while he out. Okay. And then I thought to myself, hmm, which one of them had the better assignment, right? Now, we get to see where Drew made made the most of his assignment. But at the end of the day, um, Kane is right there with Noma. He's got, he's right there in Noma's ear. He's right there in, in, in eye shot, you know what I'm saying? Smell shot, taste shot <laughs> of Noma. So I'm interested in what you think, which one was the better assignment, Drew's assignment or Kane's assignment. And of course, Monet is salty about the whole thing. I am very, 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 very suspicious of Janet, okay? We see where um, Carter has held OB at the at the jailhouse for 10 hours already. And I'm just like, what the duck? And he keeps telling him he's not under arrest. The man can get up and walk out of there at any time and he still sits there. I just, I, I, I wanted this to be over. I wanted this to, to fast forward. So we're going to move through this. He brings up con the Congressman Tate, Carter does. And what about the Taha? You know, I, to, to me, I'm like, you're, you're investigating this green card situation, which you think is going to bring you back to Noma. Maybe it's to take Congressman Tate down. Maybe it's because you think it's going to bring you back to Tariq. It's to take Tariq down. What about the Tahadas? So, um, when I look at Carter, he gives like Scandinavian and black, but he could be, you know, the character he's playing could be, uh, you know, Latin and black. Maybe he know the Tejadas. Maybe he in with the Tejadas. I don't know. Maybe he working with Janet. Maybe he got Janet over there at the Tejadas and... I don't know. It's something going on, though. It's something. It, it's got to be something happening with this Janet situation. Like she was cutting her eyes, and and it wasn't just like, oh, I overheard what you what they were saying. It was just the way she was playing in that moment. It just made me feel very suspicious of her. And anyway, Obi holds his own, man. He does not budge. He does not bring it up he doesn't know anybody he don't know anything he's not sure carter basically lies and says okay so you don't know Therese saint patrick here is uh he pulls a folder over it's got some paperwork in it. and he was like what well how do you explain all these pictures of y'all together and obi was like i need to make a phone call right turns out wasn't nothing in that folder it was all a bluff this is why they tell you when they get you down there, don't say nothing. Do not talk. Sometimes it don't matter if people think you talk. It don't matter that you didn't talk. But the point of the matter is you don't want them folks to get you locked up in that hooskow on some trickery. All right? We see where, like I said, Obi holds it down because Carter was just fishing. Um, I, to me, he need to call Davis. Right? And we see that, um, and see what Davis got in his magic bag of thugs, okay? Because Noma is looking for a reason to get rid of Obi, right? We see where Davis and um, Tariq and Braden go to this, like, fight club type situation. They're going to meet this Negro named Zion. And um, Tariq is peeping the spot. He's peeping the scene. It's like a fight club type situation, but there's no guns allowed in inside the area, 
right? So he he's peeping that. He's also peeping that there's a lot of money in this fight club type situation. And it's a lot of money being counted and passed around. And, you know, he's that, that is part of him that's like his dad is that he sees an opportunity. He finds a way to capitalize on that opportunity. Now, the cyan guy is, is not going easily. He knew Ghost. And he knows that Tariq is nowhere near as good as Ghost was. He's nowhere near as chill, as cool, um, as cunning. And he tells him this. Takes their money and throws it all over the room. He's like, I don't need your money. I got plenty of people. And Davis lets them know that you guys have got to convince this man to 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 give you product, to sell product to you. Meantime, one of Zion's guys come in and, you know, he's killing the block. He needs more product and he throws the little product he has left there on the table and to, to reap peeps that too. And so when they leave, everybody leaves out of the room and leaves them in there, who does that? Who leaves you in their office, in their special space? I mean, I, they did to pick up their money, but Tariq also picked up a couple of these, couple of these little baggies with their symbol on it. This guy's symbol on it. So he's working the program. Tariq is working the program. He's back in the game and he's working the program. We see where Obi calls his brother Kenny, and um, he learns that Drew is there. And, you know, and then Kenny was like, yeah, your co-worker's here looking for you. And and um, Obi talks to Drew and tells him, listen, they done had me locked up down here and I need you to uh, come get me. And before he walks out to go get Obi, Kenny mentions the green card. He thinks that Obi works for a company and Drew works for that company too. I was just like, poor Keeney. Poor Keeney. Now you see how your brother dressed for work. Look at look at Drew. Do Drew look like he with them? Does he? Okay. So he talks to him about the green card and 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 Drew said, now wait a minute, when did you get here? Thanks, Keeney. Thanks. Okay. We see where Drew goes down to try and get Obi out, but he can't get Obi out. Okay. He cannot get Obi out. They won't release him to Drew. Still, a Tahada goes down to get Obi. They won't let the Tahada get the Obi. But we have not heard Carter or his crew say a word about the Tahadas, you guys. It's 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 bugging me. It's bothering me. Okay. So we see where um um Drew ends up, when he realizes he can't get Obi out, he called Davis. Davis is like, I'm going to send somebody else down there. He means his substitute booty buddy. The substitute booty buddy is going to go down and get Obi out, right? Which he does. And then Drew is still there, and he's going to take him, take him on over to Noma's because Noma want to see him ASAP. Now, the thing about it is, the way they played that relationship between Obi and Drew, I enjoyed it. I did. I enjoyed it. So basically, Drew was like, I can't wait to know him or find out about all of this and everything that's going on. And Obi is like, listen, they think I'm the head of the drug cartel and not Noma. So we gonna keep it just like that because we don't want noma to be involved we don't want them to know about noma so i'm taking the brunt of all of this for the for the game for noma and drew was like no 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 i don't think i could i could get down with that i don't i i i, I, I it, this don't feel right i can't keep this from noma and he was like look this is what's best. If you really want to protect Noma, this is the way to protect Noma, right? And Obi does feel like he is getting over on Drew because Drew is playing the uh-huh, 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 uh-huh role. Basically, Drew is like, you got a pinky swear that you're going to treat me with more respect. 
And Obi's like, yeah, I will. And then when Drew goes around the side of the car to get in and drive, he tells him, he said, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I want to move up. And I need your help to do that. So if I help you, you got to help me. Pinky swear. And Obi's like, yeah, yeah, gotcha. Right? We we find out really quickly that, that Obi's running game and Drew is running game. This is what I'm... This is what I want to know, though. What's going to happen when Drew doing all of this when she still picked Kane over him? Because him and Kane both have this competition where um, they daddy was going to pick Drew to lead the, the, the family business, right? Kane really felt like it should have been him. So they brought that competition now, brought it forward into Noma's business. And now they are competing as brothers for Noma's affection, for Noma's approval, you know, that type of thing. My thing is that Drew is insignificant, right? Like they are writing him this season like he's imperative to the to the storylines, but he's still very insignificant, right? Like no one Honestly has a lot of respect for Drew. So what is he going to do when he does all of these things? He orchestrates everything, works as hard as he can to, to ice out Obi. What if she still picks Kane over you, Drew? What are you going to do? What you got going on? You going to start your own drug cartel? What do y'all think? What do y'all think is going to ultimately be Drew's fate in this final season. I'd love to know. I'd love for you guys to put it down below. Okay. Um, um, we see where Monet asked um, Diana about Kay Egan. And uh, I just forget the, the dialogue between the two of them about it. So basically she was like, did you tell um, somebody about Tariq or somebody about, um, Kay Egan. And Diana's like, what? No. And at the same time, she's fidgeting. So we get a flashback from Monet where when they were younger and she was, you know, in charge of packaging up all the drugs and she couldn't keep up. She brought her kids in. She brought her kids in. We do get to see her and Drew. We never get to see her with Zeke, right? We got to see her with Kane as a baby. And now, um, even though we don't get to see Kane in this season, scene, we get to see her uh, as a young... I mean, they almost look like toddlers, her and Drew. Drew is is drawing, you know, that's that's the first time we've seen him reference his his art they reference his art um love for art since season one but um she makes them package up dope with her right and in this process she learns some of diana's tales so now that diana is standing in front of her and calling her name and calling her name and bringing her out of this flashback um she realizes that is Diana's lying and she's lying about something but about what she doesn't really a hundred percent know Monet so she does try to talk to Janet about it a little bit and Janet is trying on her coats and things like that in her bedroom I was like Janet is planting bugs it looks like Janet is planting a bug she I, I don't know I just don't trust Janet I just don't trust Janet Something's going on here with this Janet character. And we know this is the last episode. I think we're going to see Janet. I think Janet is going home. And so this next episode, episode four, we probably won't get to see Janet. I could be wrong about that. But she asks her about, about, um, about Diana lying. And, you know, Janet is like, that's the house that Jag built, right? This is, this is what you did. You set your family up your kids up to be liars and thieves and murderers and, and drug dealers and all of these things. This is the house that Jack built. 
you guys. This is what Janet tells her. It's, it's just another opportunity for a Monet to get the mirror held up to her face. To me, to what end? To what end? Right? So, um, I mean, Diana is like, mom, mom, mom. Like I said, she brings her out of this, out of this haze and... And um, she said, who's Kay Egan? You know, and Monet is like, nothing, nobody. Let's just move on, right? It's too late. It's too late. Diana's a good liar, but it is too late. The seed of, of, of deception has been planted, and now your mama's side-eyeing you. So we see where Tariq has a plan to take out some of Zion's men so that he and Brayden can take their place. Um, Brayden is, is, is really not with it. Um, and Tariq is all about taking risks. We see where Obi, um, uh, gets out and he and Drew go through this whole thing where they pinky swear, yada, yada, yada. We see where Becca is getting side out of the dorm and she's also strung out. Like she's on that coca cocaina real bad. And, um... Brayden doesn't know how to help her. He goes to talk to Tariq about it. Tariq does, really does not care about Brayden's, what, whatever Brayden's got going on. He doesn't. He doesn't. Like, you're my friend and everything. I appreciate that. We're partners more than anything. You know what I'm saying? Your sister gonna have to be on her own journey. You gonna have to be on yours. You know? Any, um... So, I thought that was a really peculiar moment. Okay, we see back at Noma's, Obi, Obi keeps the lies going, and Drew um, pulls the fingers crossed, reverse pinky swear move on Obi, right? That's where you pinky swear with somebody, but you got your fingers crossed behind your back. So that means you ain't got to hold on to that pinky swear, that pinky promise. You don't have to honor it because you had your fingers crossed behind your back. Well, when he pinky swear with Obi, he must have had his a fingers crossed behind his back because Obi rolls the spill out on Noma and Noma, you know, she she's fine. She's she's got some little shears that she's using to clip clip at her flowers. And she's got her back turned to Obi and he is telling her everything's fine, everything's good. I didn't let them know nothing. She's like, excellent, excellent, excellent. And then Drew is like, but what about the green cards? Because your brother Keeney said that you got the green cards from us here at, at, at Noma's company. And I, and he says, I know I didn't get you no green card. Um, Kane, uh, did you get green cards? Kane's like, I did not, you know. And, um... Obi is like, uh, this is nonsense. This makes no sense. They know about Congressman Tate, all of these things. I was just like, Obi, this your last day at work. This your last day at work, Obi. It's too bad you didn't get the chance to teach Keeney how to keep his mouth closed before you, before you got your power cut off. You know, like your brother, he told the whole thing. Why did you tell your brother the whole story? Like, <sighs> so Noma walks up and, and, and he's telling her, everything I've done, I've done to protect you. You have been my number one, um, my number one concern this whole time. And in just... In just a blink of an eye, she takes those shears and she brings it up dead into his neck. And he calls her in Nigerian, he calls her devil. And she says to him in Nigerian, thank you for your services. And pulls them shears out of his neck, baby, and he bled out. Oh, the way he fell. The way he acted out his death, it was good. To the knees. I'm still up. I'm still alive. And then he falls over like a tree gone. Noma wants him to get, get this cleaned up. Kane goes and kneels down over, over, over Obi's body. And Drew is standing there. He is so satisfied because Noma says to him, good work. 
My thing is that you've known Obi longer. You've known Obi longer. And you take Drew's word over Obi. Now you got two people you don't even know. You don't have Obi to watch him. You don't have Obi to watch Kane and Drew and Effie. This is essentially your crew now. Okay. Back in class, we see where Tariq runs um, up on Effie and tells Effie that she's got competition. She He gives her these two little packages and, and these little packets have he says you got somebody else that's selling selling drugs here on stansfield and she is like are you pulling my leg right now he's like no i'm looking out for you i'm looking out for you because you got somebody that's working your territory right and she was like oh okay so then she goes and um she decides she's gonna take it to noma now um we see where diana's Secret is out of the bag, at least to Sharkeisha, right? It's not Sharkeisha. It's light-skinned Keisha, but light-skinned Keisha, she drops her phone, Diana, light-skinned Keisha picks the phone up, and she sees a picture of a man holding a baby, a baby belly, a pregnant woman's belly, and she deduces from that that Diana is pregnant, and... Although we've never seen them chit chat or talk in any type of way, they're going to seal the promise, pinky swear, you won't tell anyone, I won't, I got your back, your whole life is ahead of you, are you sure this is something you want to do, Diana doesn't know, I'm like, girl, she's texting the entire world and letting them know that you're pregnant, like, you, I mean, you don't know this girl, it's just... Once somebody finds out, you might as well tell everybody. That's my opinion. Okay. Kane asked Noma about Monet. Like, why are you not letting her come back to work? And she insults him about his unhealthy relationship with mummy. And we see where um, there's like a little scuffle. And, you know, where she walks off and she throws her hand and then he... She, he you know, grabs her to spin her around and she's going to slap him and he blocks it. And it creates this weird sexual tension between the two of them. And, um, you know, they get really super close in the face. And it's at this moment that Effie walks in and wants to talk about these little packets and the fact that there could be competition. And Noma tells Cain to figure out who it is and and put a stop to it but be discreet she says okay so kane is like oh good i got another assignment um drew kind of trumps me i gotta kill this one right um it's awkward because effie could tell that they were about to kiss like something's going on between the two of them we say where monet and janet discuss um her nice things and then she gives her a code and and um, you guys already know, I think uh, Janet was getting planning bugs. We see that Effie um, takes um, the competition info, like I said, back to Noma. Um, Kane runs down on this guy named Bird. Oh, we also get to see where um, Noma's daughter runs in at this time. Her daughter runs in. And she's whining and upset about something. And they both, Effie and Kane, get to see how Noma, really her daughter is her kryptonite. Her daughter is her kryptonite. Like she's not harsh or cruel or murderous or ruthless or anything when it comes to her daughter. So I got a feeling... It's going to be used against Noma here shortly, okay? So, Kane takes his assignment. He runs on down on this guy named Bird. Bird, he works for Roman. He thinks it's Roman that's selling. Bird, when he sees um, Kane's car, he knows it's Kane. He's paranoid. He's, I mean, it's like the streets are afraid of Kane, 
And so he's riding through in this Land Rover and they know his Land Rover. They are panicking. They are shocked. And, 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 and you know, everybody's shaking in their boots because it's Kane. It's the formidable Kane. And uh, the guy's like, I don't know anything about a Stansfield. I have no idea what Stansfield even is. And and he's like, just give me, tell me where the next time Roman it, uh, Roman re-ups. Tell me where his next re-up is. And the guy does it. Like, what? <laughs> I mean, you could have gave him any information. To give him the exact address, I is just stupid. So Kane goes over to where this 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 meetup is and has his boys. Now he's there. Boys have got their trucks. He's got his truck. And they set the truck full of drugs, the van full of full, full of the um Uggs on fire. And then peel off. Right? They're very discreet, Kane. Very discreet. But if people know your car, they can look two blocks up the road and see your car coming and they shaking in their boots. Why would you then drive that same car to a scene where you're blowing up a, a van full of full of Uggs? All right. It's fine. We see Monet and Janet at the bar. Um, we see where... Um, I didn't know you could be on oxycodone and drinking, but it's fine, Monet. Kane um, does Tariq's dirty work, essentially. When he goes and blows his van up, he does Tariq's dirty work. So Tariq needed to get rid of a couple of, of, of Zion's guys. He does that by using Kane and Effie. It was smart. It was smart. And it did give me original power tees. It does give me ghost tees. And y'all tell me if y'all agree with that, put it down below. We see where Carter questions um, Tate's brother, Detective Tate, and, and he gets breaking news about the explosion, um, this van with these with these drugs in it. You know, and he feels like there's there's a drug war now going on. Carter does. Detective Tate wants in. He doesn't want Tate to get involved. They feel like he's an idiot and he's a dummy and he, you know, what I'm saying he's too close to it and all of this, that, and the other. And Carter is like, let him tag along, Detective Tate, because I'm gonna see if I can get more information out of him. Right? I don't know if they're trying to take Tate down, Congressman Tate down, or what, but. I just trying to figure out where is all of this going. It's kind of like they're chasing their tails. And I only say that because no one's talked with the Tejadas. No one's rolling up on the Tejadas, right? Um, so they go down, they see where it's been blowed up, and um they run the tag on the van. It goes back to Roman. Like who uses a car registered in their name to transport thousands and thousands of dollars worth of drugs. They run down on the guy and, you know, put him in a, you know, handcuffs and to take him away and all that. And that was a really good scene. It was a little bit of action. Um, I don't know what they're going to get from this Roman person, but basically he's out of the loop. And uh, we see where Brayden wants to um, wants to whine about um, Becca and everything that's going on with, with with what she's got going on. When Zion sends, he's talking to Tariq. When Zion sends a text and tells Tariq that he's gonna do business with him, but the cost is three hundred thousand now. Well, what they got for the cars was two fifty. So he wants to leave Brayden. Tariq wants to leave Brayden in charge of trying to figure out how they get the other fifty thousand. Um, it's just so disrespectful. It's so disrespectful how Tariq is treating Brayden. But I mean, okay. Even Zion looks over at Tommy and was like, I mean, uh, looks over at Brayden when they were talking in, in the Fight Club, and he was like, "Are you? You even got a white boy like your daddy did?" And he says, are you crazy like, like Tommy was or is? 
you know, and Braden don't answer, right? He seems terrified. Okay, so we see where Tariq goes and he meets, um, he meets Davis. And he tells Davis that it's a lot going on. He needs another 50K. Um, definitely Davis wants in. He's like, all I got right now is the hustle. I need to get, I need to make money. I'll give you the 50. You give me my 20% my back and my 50 back, right? All right. And Tariq was like, okay, cool. But I need you. We got to keep Noma from knowing about this deal that I'm making with Zion. And I'm going to need you to help with that. And Davis is like, say, say less. We see where um, Kane questions Effie about the, the drugs. Like, how did you get them? How did you find them? Are you sure it wasn't Tariq that set it up? And she was like, really? What's going on with you and Noma? Like, you trying to trying to call me out for Tariq. And I could call you out just as easily about the Noma situation. Like, why was you about to tongue her down when I walked in her office? And he was like, nah, it ain't even like that. And she was like, yeah, whatever. I shouldn't have never gave up my um, interview for you. And, you know, he kind of calms it down a little bit. But he got his own agenda, too. She's got her own agenda. What it is, I'm just not sure. But he's got his own agenda, too, because he leaves that conversation and goes over to Noma. And him and Noma end up screwing. He's going to get that spot one way or another. If he got to do it on his knees, then so be it. We see where Davis goes in and runs the play on Noma. Okay? And basically, he gives her all this paperwork that explains why Obi is no longer working for her. He hadn't been seen since he left the police department. And so this is his way of saying, I got you. I'm going to keep you covered. So if they come and ask him where Obi is, you can show them this paperwork to show that he left the country and da, 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 da. Okay, and she's like, why would you want to help me? And I'm, I got my good eye on you. I'm like, yeah, he's Tariq's lawyer. You should have both of your eyes on him. He shouldn't really be able to be, walk up in here. But it's fine. We see where um, Brayden goes to see this singer girl at the club where Tariq works. And um, I thought when she mentioned last episode that she that she ne needed another drug dealer, I thought the girl was talking about pot. I did. I mean, this girl on cocaine. Okay, and she just standing there having a casual conversation with somebody she barely know and puts a little on her hand and toot, toot, toot. And then she was like, you're so uptight. And she put a little bit more on her hand and she holds it up and he does it. He takes it. Now, you see your sister strung out. You know your brother was on it real bad. He took all them drugs from Tariq. Now, you toot, toot, tootin'. I was like, oh, I don't know who gonna make it out of this season. I don't know. It, it could be any of them. Um, we see where Cain goes, oh, like I said, over to Noma and they have sex. Later, they have a dinner at Mummy's. And um, Diana gets found out bigly. Now, Pinky done called Tariq. Right? Tariq talked to Brayden about this is how we're going to move these drugs. With this group, this music group, you know, the toot, toot, toot. She's a singer. We gonna use this group. This group gonna go all over to all over college campuses. And they selling merchandise, all of this stuff. We gonna do the same thing. We Except we're gonna hone in on their business. These, these college kids are how we're gonna make this money. So it, it's his own type of club. It ain't a truth, but he's using the setup. He's using the party setup in order to sell these drugs. It's a it's a good plan, right? And and um, he gets a phone call from Pinky, and Pinky sends him a text. Pinky done picked the ring uh, camera up, the 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 footage from uh, Kate Egan's ring camera, and he tells 
Tariq, he sends it over there to Tariq. And Tariq is like, oh my gosh, you did not send this to Monet, did you? But Pinky does. He sends it to him and he sends it to Monet. Monet's phone is vibrating at the dinner table. They're all there. Diana's sitting right next to her. When she finally picks that phone up and she sees that ring camera footage with Diana there with the red wig on, she said, oh my gosh, Diana, what did you do? And Diana knows instantaneously what she's talking about, right? She shows it to Kane, right? Drew gets up instantly. He got to get Diana out of there because if Diana found out, he's found out, right? They got to roll, baby. She tries to fight and 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 get at Diana and she was like what did you do what and and Diana's like mama 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 I was like yeah the last time y'all had dinner every time y'all had dinner now before this time it's been you telling everybody business now it's you that gets found out real bigly right and uh it's it's just melee melee Drew gets her out of the house and gets her in the car and peels off just before Kane is right on their tail shooting at them with a gun. Like, you cannot go back here. <laughs> you cannot come back here. That's the episode, you guys. I would love to know what you all think about this episode. What do you think about how they're positioning the Kane and the Drew character. Um, do we see Drew as a number two? Are we starting to buy him as a formidable foe at this point? I certainly am not. I certainly am not. Um, the Zion character, it was just real lackluster for me. Wasn't great. I am excited about the direction that they're taking the Davis character in. Um, I did call that I didn't think that Noma and Obi would make it past episode three. Turns out it was just Obi. But how long are we going to have to deal with, with Noma? How long? And do you guys think that the cousin Janet is up to something? I'd love to know what you think. Put it down below, you guys. And until next time, honeybees. I holla. <laughs> I am so exhausted.